In this video, I'll talk about logical controls. So we know that physical controls include things like locked doors to server rooms, fencing around a building, and so on. But what exactly are logical controls? Well, these are often called technical controls. They're designed to enforce access control to resources, such as access to a network, or to an IT system, or to specific data within a system. Either way, logical controls must align with organizational security policy, and there needs to be continuous monitoring and evaluation of the effectiveness of these controls in protecting data. And you'll notice that this is a common theme with IT security, continuously monitoring and verifying that our security solutions properly protect assets. Authentication is a logical control, and it is the proving of one's identity. There are three types of authentication categories, including something you know, like a password, something you have, like a smart card, and something you are, such as a unique fingerprint. Multi-factor authentication, or MFA, combines at least two of these categories. Maybe it would include a smart card and a PIN, something you have and something you know. Identity federation is also a part of authentication that is becoming more and more popular these days. Essentially, with Identity Federation, we've got a trusted central identity store. So instead of having multiple copies of user credentials, for example, we've got one central copy that is trusted by multiple applications. So therefore, there's got to be some configuration, of course, so that various applications trust the central identity store. And also, the central identity store has to trust the relying applications. Now, the idea is that Identity Federation is a single set of credentials that allows web single sign-on for web applications. Authorization occurs after successful authentication. We should be following the principle of least privilege so that we only assign permissions that are absolutely required and nothing more. This is often done through access control lists or ACLs at various levels. So we could have an ACL controlling access to various portions of a website or within an application. ACLs can control degrees of access to the file system on a server or access to a network itself through network ACLs, which are often called network packet filtering rules. Other examples of logical controls include anti-malware, hardware tokens used for VPN authentication, where the hardware token is going to have a numeric code that changes periodically that is synchronized with the VPN appliance. So we have to enter in that unique numeric code within a certain time frame to successfully authenticate to the VPN. Password policies are another example of logical controls, as are NTFS file system permissions. In this video, we defined and discussed logical controls.